Let's start up with our Ford Maverick information here. Let's get, try to get it down to one slide. So first of all, to recap last week's episode, I'd like to say a huge thank you to the, per, to the individual that went on Maverick Truck Club, Sir Slayer, and you know gave the information on how his EcoBoost caught fire. So a bit of a little talk about the future of trucks, and, but specific to the Ford Maverick. Uh, I'm not going to be surprised whatsoever if a recall comes out on the EcoBoost engines. So we did have, you know, so far it's one EcoBoost that's caught fire. If it's just one, it's going to stay that way. But I uh, do have a bit of a recall for, for 2015 to 2019 Lincoln MKCs, and that's an EcoBoost engine, and it is involving fires. So a, um, a recall on the Maverick could very well come out. I'm very curious to see what the solution is going to be, uh, but I highly suspect it's going to be something very small, uh, such as you know a gasket. I mentioned that in last week's episode. And if it's not a gasket, well, there could theoretically be something in the motor. You know, we saw it on the uh, what was it, Le 50 or less 2.7 liter V6s, which we absolutely loved on our Bronco. Mm -hmm. Loved that engine. And some totally. people said, "I'm never going to buy a Bronco," and they missed out on what I think of the. We must. I, we must have owned. I must have owned 80 some vehicles now, and together we must be close to 90. But I've owned so many vehicles, I've driven so many vehicles, and the Bronco is still in the top three vehicles that I've ever driven. And it is my favorite vehicle I've ever owned. I wasn't, I'm happy I didn't miss out that opportunity because there were some valve issues with 50 or so Broncos. Now, Will there be a recall on the Bron Maverick EcoBoost engine? I'll let you all know, but being that there's one now that's official that came out last week for the 2015 to 2019 uh, Lincoln MKC, I wouldn't be surprised. It could be something going wrong in the motor that's then causing the motor to block to crack and then spew out oil. But the fact that, you know, Sir Slayer was able to drive for a while makes me think that probably good chance a bit of oil most of the oil leaked out of the engine and then the engine actually didn't have enough oil to properly not just lubricate itself but also to help keep its temperatures lower i think probably that fire was caused by high very high temperatures from excess friction and wear in the motor because of the lack of the oil. And I think all of that could go back to something as simple as an oil cap. cap. Remember Ford assembles mm -hmm. these motors. They're not producing all the parts for these motors. It could be a head gasket. I'll keep you all updated on that information right there. And the recall has come back for the Ford Maverick in regards to uh, last year. There's the recall for 2.5 liter hybrid Ford Mavericks escapes and Lincoln Corsairs, that's the 2.5 liter hybrid engine, and that recall is back. And we're waiting for a solution. I look forward to sharing the solution with all of you. Now, specific to the Maverick, now we've got really good news. So really good news on the Maverick is very few problems, a few recalls, you know, f between four and six overall recalls for the EcoBoost and the hybrid. Now, there, there was one EcoBoost that caught fire, but so far, very much an insulated, isolated case. So not a reason to not take possession of your Maverick when it comes in. Uh, Ford will take care of these things. Look how good these vehicles look, folks. Now, I want to do give credit to the, per, to the individual here. Uh, we've got ESPN 2006 sharing photos, uh, really cool photos of his hybrid. So... He's got a list, and you can check that out, that out on Maverick Truck Club. I think these things look great with, you know, a lot of the accessories you got. He's got the Ford bed divider, the Ford soft bed cover rollable. And I'll try to put it on our Amazon affiliates link list. So if you want to buy some of these parts and you want to encourage the channel, well, click on our links that we attach to our videos and then go do your shopping and buying. Everything's going to cost the same price, but uh, Amazon will be forced to send us money. So jokes jokes on, on the system. Why not use the system if it's there? But he also did... This is actually pretty cool. This is something new to the Maverick. You can have sort of a mock 
Mach 1 inspired yeah, really look like hood. It. So you've got black hood, flat black with uh, orange lining going mm -hmm. around it. Personally, I would like to see that for myself. I'd want it to be, uh, instead of matte, I'd like the gloss. Mm -hmm. And you cannot put it on any color. It's really with the, the gray, I guess, that it's beautiful. Because with other colors, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, either way, your XLTs, you know, that orange line, it fits in with that orange line right there. And tremors, I look forward to tremors actually showing up. We have yet to receive a tremor. So I don't know what's going on there, but I think a Maverick, you throw on some tires, you throw on some mags, and they look just beautiful. So I guess I'm just trying to put a, po put a positive of this. These are incredibly affordable trucks. They work hard, 1,500 pounds in the bed. You got um, towing is, to, you know, 2,000 towing on the hybrid, 4,000 pounds on the EcoBoost if you take the 4K towing. So 2,000 pounds towing but not also 1,500 pounds in the bed. It's one or the other. And if you follow Maverick Truck Club, we know that we've got some, you know, call them our, our spy photos of someone towing a Corvette with their Maverick. That clearly was not, uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know how that, folks, don't use, use the vehicle the way that the specs let you use the vehicles. So really, really nice hybrid build. <laughs> and I don't have a problem putting mud tires on a hybrid because, yes, it's front-wheel drive only. And some people will say, you know, well, that doesn't make sense. That should only be for 4x4s. Four four. Well, wouldn't you want more traction and more grip if you have less wheels turning? I think it makes a ton of sense to throw that on a hybrid because if you're only your front wheels are turning, you want that extra gripping power. But Plus, you love the look. You always want your cool. Bronco to be Sasquatch. So this is the kind of a Sasquatch uh, custom on the Maverick. Yes. <laughs> and speaking of the Bronco, you know, for truck news, uh, loving the Bronco 2.7 liter. I think the Badlands, fantastic value. But the big bend and the base model now coming with marine grade vinyl and the floors being washed out so they've got a drain plug and they're rubberized i think that's just absolutely incredible barely any price increase coming up for july 10th when these changes occur and that's if you're built july 10th and after and the outer banks mm -hmm. and the wild track is going to come with leather oh. so no more tissue no more cloth tissue sorry that's a french thing <laughs> I know in English, tissue is what you blow your nose into. Yeah, don't blow your nose in the seats. Now, fantastic Ford Maverick news. We've got numbers in. So Ford Maverick in May, 26,824 Ford Mavericks were made. Wow, now, I'm that's a lot. That's the biggest month of the year. That's the biggest month since the beginning of production. So that's April fantastic. Was almost the, no, and March was almost the same, but... Me uh, beats everything. That's a good and group. sorry, twenty six thousand eight hundred and twenty four is the whole Her Hermosillo production. So that's with Bronco Sports, but uh, Maverick itself. Let's see, Maverick calendar calendar year to date, they've made forty three thousand eight hundred and ten Mavericks, mm -hmm. and the Maverick monthly production. I'm sorry, is eleven thousand sixty one. The Bronco Sport, 15,763. So Ford did promise to make, you know, bring down. At first, they were making a whole lot more Bronco Sports than Mavericks. And one of the promises they made for that as 2022 would progress and into 2023, they'd make less Bronco Sports and more Mavericks. Well, there you have it. They're making that happen. They're ramping up production. And it is the best month of production since the very beginning uh all the way back to june 2021 where they only made 216 that month and then july 150 and but 11,061 fantastic numbers it also indicates that we've got chances that a lot of people get their hybrids <laughs> so looking at it some people have done the math over at maverick truck club and i'll try to give credit to the person that did the math here you've got commodore bob saying that based on his math two-thirds of all hybrid orders could be scheduled by the end of the model year that means only 33 percent roughly would would not get their ford maverick hybrid but even better that's including 
the current numbers that include people that are going to get kicked out. So if you haven't, mm -hmm. if your Maverick order isn't COVP, so customer order verification, uh, process, procedure, whatever. <laughs> I forget what the P is and I always get it confused. But you've got to have, you, you need to have your driver's license sent over to Ford. You and your dealer need to sign the purchase or lease offer and send that over to Ford. And you also need to sign your build offer and send that over to Ford. Then Ford sends over a confirmation and the customer needs to have that signed. So there, you should be signing, you know, four different documents and then you're confirmed. But the non-confirmed, and I'll tell you, there's gonna be a lot of non-confirmed. A lot of these orders aren't gonna be confirmed. Well, they're gonna be kicked out of the way. So if your order is confirmed, and that's, sorry, I shouldn't say that's good. That is, that's the part of this that's bad news. Some people are gonna get, if they don't watch this channel, they're gonna get kicked out of having their Maverick. They're gonna be so mad at Ford, and it's gonna be 100% their dealer's fault and 0% Ford's fault because Ford doesn't want to build Mavericks for people that don't want those Mavericks anymore. That's what this whole order confirmation system is about, 50% of it. And the other 50% of it is Ford doesn't want to build Mavericks for dealers that when the Maverick shows up, the dealer goes, well, the market wants this vehicle more at a higher price. Like your used Maverick is worth 10,000 more than what you paid for it. Well, Surprising. they want to push out. They don't want to give Mavericks to the dealers that are going to try to tell, you know, someone like Marie, well, Marie, we're sorry, but, you know, your vehicle here, we could sell it as a used vehicle with 20,000, 30,000 miles on it for $10,000 more. So, you know, we're, we, we, need to, we need to increase the price by $10,000. Well, when you have done what's called the COVP process with Ford, as a dealer, you've signed and promised mm -hmm. to sell the vehicle at Ford's price to that customer. You know, if the customer doesn't take it at the price that, you know, at the right Ford price, well, then if it becomes part of your inventory, well, then it's your inventory and you can do what you want with it. But Ford wants to get these Mavericks to the right people at the right price. They don't want it to show up and have the person be like, oh, I bought a Subaru uh, two months ago. I heard that recently. And it's like, well, please, you should have told me. I would have canceled your order and someone else would have got their Maverick instead. But thankfully, you know, we call up the people on the list who've been waiting and we make a switch in the system and we, you know, try to smooth it over with Ford and explain the whole situation to them. So great news. Uh, a lot of people are going to get their hybrids, but not everyone's going to get their hybrids. And that I predicted and called uh, all the way back to in 2021. Uh, I thought that not everyone would get their hybrids, even those that order within the correct time frame. And then I was also predicting that in 2022, all the people that reordered in 2022 for a 2023, that they also wouldn't get their hybrids. I was originally saying of the four days that were open for sale, if you're day one, you're pretty much guaranteed as long as you're COVP'd. Day two should be, but come day three, I'm not so sure you're, if you're a day three, not so sure you're getting your hybrid. If you're a day four, you're, you know, I was saying, you know, sorry, but you're probably most certainly not getting a hybrid. So I later said, if you're a day three or day four, highly consider switching over to an EcoBoost so that you do get built. Uh, Jim Genoa uh, is asking you, what's the percentage do you think will not, will not have COVP? Uh, I actually, I'm trying to play it's from memory here. <laughs> no, I actually have, I think in Canada wise, I think in Canada, there's going to be about 40% that don't have COVP. Now, I don't know if it's going to be as high in the States because we were doing COVP only a year after. You'd already been doing COVP for a year when in Canada, we got onto the whole COVP process. So we're a year behind. So dealers were slower to get on board. But let's say in the States, maybe half as much like here it's a problem when you've got 40 about 40 percent not covp that's a major problem but in the states let's say because you have a year of extra experience maybe you've got you know 20 percent that'll lose out and that's pure speculative guesswork now production numbers for the bronco you know we love broncos here so let's head back over here now for the Bronco, we do have production numbers for the Bronco. So May 2023, 8,211 Broncos 
were made and in 2022 that number was 9,475 so that's a decrease of 13.3 percent uh, but 2023 year to date this that's bad news but stick with me I always I always have you know the silver lining here so far for Bronco production this year we're at 50,124 and 2022 there we're at 46,161. So that's an 8.1% increase. So for Bronco production numbers, there you have them. Broncos are being produced and they're being produced at a higher number than they were in 2022. So very good news there for those of us that are waiting on a Bronco. Now overall, uh, overall production on almost every model is up. Huge decline on the Escape because we all know uh, if you follow this show on a weekly basis, the Escape was held up for quite some time because of a programming issue is mm -hmm. what we were told. But these recalls worry me a little bit, but I'll cover that more at length when we have a bit more. <laughs> uh, but Maverick so far... If you look over to that Maverick production, May 2023, uh, let's head over. We've got year to date. I want to cover the year to date. The percent change, 14.4% more this May than the May before for the Maverick. And year to date, um, this chart is a little old, must be a little older because the numbers we had are a little different. But Maverick May production was 11,061 vehicles. So very good, very good production in 43,810 vehicles. Now, the problem is, is that supply and demand is truly what, you know, really decides price. Price, and that's true for the stock market. You know, that's true for wages. Everything is all about supply and demand. You do a very, if you have a very, very rare skill set that's in very, very high demand, you're going to have an incredibly high paying job or business. So Maverick production for prices to come down on Mavericks, I'm not expecting that to happen anytime soon because production would need to go through the roof. They need to quadruple production or a uh, demand need would need to be you know cut three you know by four times there'd be need to be four times less demand versus what's currently being supplied for you know there to be an issue uh, uh, for us to be in the right frame set for prices to really come down on the Ford Maverick.